Hello and welcome to Postgres FM, a weekly show about all things PostgreSQL. I am Michael, founder of PG Mustard, and I'm joined as usual by Nikolai from Postgres AI. Hey, Nikolai. Hi, Michael. And today we are delighted to be joined by two excellent guests who have each contributed a lot to Postgres over many years now and who both recently published blog posts on the topic we're going to be discussing. Let me introduce you both quickly. Um, first, we have Gutchen Yildirim Yelnek, who co-founded the Prague Postgres Grail Meetup and is a staff engineer at Zeta. Welcome, Gutchen. Hello. Thank you for having me. We're delighted to. And we're also honored to be joined by Robert Haas, long-serving PostgreSQL major contributor and committer and VP Chief Architect Database Service at EDB. Welcome, Robert. Hello, thank you for having me. It's our pleasure as well. Um, so to kick us off, uh, I've prepared a couple of questions to ask each of you in turn, uh, but I'd also like to encourage you to ask each other questions as we go along. Perhaps we can start with you, Gulchin. What are your high-level thoughts on the topic of is PGDump a backup tool? And why is it something you wanted to write about recently? It is funny because I didn't actually wanted to write about PG Dump. <laughs> and <laughs> I just joined uh, the, my current employer is Zeta and it was my first week. And then I noticed something in the Discord channel that we have. Somebody's having an issue with PG Dump. I was like, oh, what's happening? And I saw like some parameter that I didn't recognize. Like in the error message, I was like, restrict non-system relation kind. I was like, I don't know this you know, configuration option or anything. And then I noticed it was actually introduced recently at that time. And I was like, oh, okay, why? And then I check it and it's, uh, it is kind of related to this CVE. I remember the number 2024-734. Doesn't matter, wow. but there's a blog post about it. So you can find with this number. And in there, it explains like, what is this vulnerability and how can actually people use this vulnerability to actually compromise uh, when you are pot potentially your database because it affects the PG dump. So people can actually create a non-temporary object in the database. And then just before PG dump begins, it changes this object with a different thing, like a view or foreign table. So people can insert SQL there. And then when PG dump attempts to do the backup, then it kind of can run the injected SQL code. So why we are there? Because it affects it. And then, then I said like, hey, this affects from Postgres 12 to 16, uh, upgrade uh, the you know Postgres versions and test if PG dump scripts are working, review the user permissions, you know, the standard you know recommendations when this kind of thing happens. And then when uh, we were sharing this blog post on Twitter, I think our marketing team, you know, made like, okay, it affects PG dump, a tool to backup Postgres databases. <laughs> that was, it was the definition of that tool, tool basically. And then I re retweeted and everything and I noticed, oh, people are saying, you know, the usual, when you say something about PG dump, it is not a backup tool. <laughs> and then I was like, okay. And then basically it kept going. So I had to write another blog post to say, is it really, or is it not? <laughs> because who, who, like, first, who first said this? Who? I don't know. I didn't know this because there were so many. And uh, I know that because, you know, in Postgres community, whenever PG dump uh, topic opens up, somebody will say, you know, PG dump is not a backup tool. But then actually a few days before this discussion happened, Peter Eisentraut committed a change, which will be in effect in PG 18 that tries to remove the like backup terminology and kind of converts to export so that people are not considering it as a backup tool in a way. So this, I think, made people to be uh, more vocal, saying that, look, this was how it was before, but not anymore, and you should not ch say it. And then I had to write another, I mean, I felt like I should write something more about it to explain why and why not we cannot consider, you know, PG dump backup or not. And in my opinion, it is a tool that can be used to backup a database. <laughs> and it is a logical way of uh, doing a backup. You can call it a dump. Maybe, I don't know, you can define, you know, Nikolai was saying, is it backup tool or yes, no, or define backup. So it mm -hmm. can be a backup in your case. When I was like working as a DBA for a long time, I was using it to backup databases. Depends basically the context of how you use it and the nuances that you can actually utilize this tool. So yeah, that's where I stand today. I don't agree that it is not a backup tool. It can be a backup tool, but there are maybe later on in the discussion, we can discuss what are the drawbacks with it and how actually regular backup tools that are out of Postgres can help like environment or backrest or something. C can I jump straight away with a question? Yeah, please. 
Uh, yeah, I, I saw also comments that it's maybe for very large databases, like many terabytes and more, it's not a good tool, backup tool, but for, at least for small databases, it's, it's good and also partial. We can uh, export only one table. Uh, imagine we have a tiny database, just like, I don't know, like 100 rows, one table, and I, I, I select star from this table in PSQL and just uh, make a picture on my iPhone. Is this a backup, this picture? We can restore from it, right? Well, maybe. Yeah. It's a snapshot, right? Yeah, yeah. why not? <laughs> well, dump is also a snapshot, right? Yeah, uh, and that I don't really see like why it can't be called backup. <laughs> okay. It's a moment, and you can use that moment to do something with it. Right. I thought it was a really good blog post, Gulchin. I will share it in the show notes as well for anybody that hasn't seen it. And speaking of good blog posts on the topic... I think Robert added a lot of good points as well. Both of your first blog posts included a lot of technical details, like the technical aspects of why it technically could be considered a backup tool, but also the drawbacks, the many drawbacks of it and why you might recommend for a general purpose backup tool using something else. So Robert, how about yourself? What, how would you summarize your high level thoughts on the topic and, and why it was something you want? Well, maybe you didn't want to write about it either. <laughs> Well, I think I it just kind of got under my skin because, it, you know, Goldstein's blog post was not the first time that I've heard people sort of using this PG dump is not a backup to a line. And to me, uh, that kind of came across as shouting at people without necessarily like giving, uh, you know, a reasoning, right? You know, the documentation said for literally 20 years that PG dump uh, could be used to make backups, or I don't remember exactly what the wording was. And when I looked into the history in uh, Git, I actually found that the language that it's been changed to now uh, with exporting the database is very similar to the original language that was used to describe PG dump when that code was first added to PostgreSQL. But there was a two decade period in the middle when the documentation said, hey, you can use this to take backups. And from my point of view, it doesn't even matter whether that's true or whether you think that's true. If the documentation said for two decades that X piece of software could be used to do Y, then nobody should get in trouble for saying that. Like, nobody should get called out for saying that. That just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, I mean, honestly, I think, you know, we, some of us, uh, self-included, can be a little too eager to jump on people's case from time to time. And I don't think that's, like, good for our community. I think we want to be the kind of community where... When people show up, we give them help, we give them good advice, and we don't come down on them like a ton of bricks. And and Gulchin is not the only person I've seen who seemed to me to be kind of getting beaten up a little bit. And I was just like, why are we doing this? Like, clearly PG Dump isn't right for every purpose, and there are lots of situations where it's probably not what you want. But I, I just, the, the tone is baffling to me, because it seemed very hostile to me, and I, I couldn't make any sense of really why we should be that hostile about anything, but especially why we should be so hostile about that in particular. And to that, I actually have something to add, because after this um, discussion started to come up again, and I was looking at the groups like where people are actually using this, like it's not a backup tool rhetoric. And I've seen like a few users that are get, trying to get help from these Postgres communities that we have online, a lot mm -hmm. of them. And there was like, I noted two of them for today. One of them is asking, PG dump can limit a backup by schema. I mean, it's like using this uh, sentence and there's somebody answering directly. It's not even related there, but PG dump is not a backup. And then there's another user. Can someone send me the command to take back of a partial database, which actually PG dump can, right? Mm. We, it, we can do the schema only, we can do just, you know, the data, whatever, or we can do a table, any type of object. And then answer is like, there is no such command. The standard backup tools take backups of the entire database cluster. <laughs> so basically, 
It doesn't consider it as a backup tool, even though there is a PG dump command that can actually do what people are asking. So that's what I find very, like, not helpful, right? We could just say to people, look, this is this PG dump command that you can actually take this, you know, a table that you want to take or selective restore, whatever you want to do with it, and help people to the direction that they're actually trying to get, get there. Instead, just saying there is no such a command. It's not a backup tool anyway, because the standard backup tools takes the entire database cluster. So that I don't find helpful, as what Robert is saying. That is not helpful at all. You might not agree that it's a good tool for using it as a backup solution, and which we can talk where it could be improved or why actually people should prefer you know backup solutions. But this is still not helpful. There's a tool that we were all using for a long time. And it can does all the things that these people were asking. So nuance of the question matters, the context of it. And that's where I am, basically. And, and you know, if, if somebody asks about how to use PG Dump and you want to tell them, hey, here's how to do that thing with PG Dump, but maybe you want to consider some other alternatives instead. Cool. Like, I got no problem with that. That can be helpful advice. But like, pretending that the thing that they're asking about doesn't exist when it does that i just don't understand that at all so yeah i've definitely got some theories as to why people are behaving and speaking like that but i do one think of, one of such people is just here i can yeah. speak first hand <laughs> if you want yeah. I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to, I think you've got some really good language around this, Nikolai, around logical backups and physical backups that really helps clarify. And I think if people use that language in those sentences, it would immediately help with clarity yeah. and also limitations. But I'd love to hear your like high level thoughts on the topic as well. And, and yeah, why is something you say? Uh, so uh, this statement, uh, PG dump is not a back backup tool. Uh, is a reaction to the statement uh, documentation had uh, 20 years. Mm. And we saw so many disastrous situations in many companies uh, who t tried to rely on this as backup tool while growing. So we did, like, actually it was not my statement, right? I just picked it, right? It, I, th I think Frank Pashot also mentioned it. I don't, I'm not sure he was the first who reacted to the uh, Gulchin's uh, article, but I joined as well. And I'm sure in many, not only the Discord or Slack or IRC, anywhere, many people are, are picking up this motto because it's painful to observe how many companies relied on pitch dump as, uh, as like dumps as backups, right? If, if we call dumps and consider them backups, okay, we can do that, but there are limitations. There is big power in this, not only partial, uh, you can take specific tables. Uh, these days we have many managed Postgres offerings and they don't share backups with us, right? If you want multi-cloud backup, you must use pitch dump. You cannot get data without, like, or copy or something. You cannot get uh, physical backups out, out of RDS, for example, right? But uh, this pain observed for, for a couple of decades caused me like joining this movement uh, saying that pitch dump is not a backup, backup tool. Uh, at the same time, there is a, like I, I told Mike, Michael, there is like it's there is like a kind of professional shift in my mind here because when somebody says backups, I envision only physical backups. Although there are logical backups, of course. And again, this is not my idea to uh, introduce this language. I checked it in Oracle and my SQL documentation, and I think maybe it's a good idea to borrow this concept and and mention like specifically say like, there are two kinds of backups physical and logical logical are like they all have pros and cons right mm -hmm. for example logical backup uh, if you rely on pitch dump as backup tool like for example partial and escaping from rds it's good pros right speaking of cons it's always like kind of sp mm -hmm. snapshot it puts pressure on your database in terms of xmin horizon uh, affecting auto vacuum behavior which is unacceptable if you have 10 plus terabytes and uh, heavy load. Also, at one day, some bug or corruption might happen and you simply cannot read uh, your data at logical level, uh, while physical backups are not affected. They just copy files, right? And it's like, there are many pros and cons to compare, right? And I, I like the idea to, sp 
to, to split uh, language between logical and physical. And for me personally, when somebody says backups without specification, I still see by default physical only, right? If we are considering the corruption in the logical backups, the corruption can be also in the physical level. Right, I, so, I, I'm okay with that, but I have backup, I can restore and deal with it, right? Well, then actually you can maybe keep this uh, corruption between your physical backups if you didn't notice, if it's go unnoticed. And then if you had the logical backup on top of it, maybe, you know, it could be another tool to fight this uh, physical corruption that you have. Yeah, what I'm trying to say, if, if I have physical backups with corruption, I will, I will deal with it and so on. But if uh, I have corruption which prevents PG dump from reading data, it will just fail and I don't have anything. Yeah, so I'd just like to make a, a couple of comments here. I think one of the things that I find really interesting is that people who work for different companies that all support and use Postgres can have very different experiences uh, of some of this stuff. And I've seen that before with other issues and I'm seeing it here too, because my typical experience with PG dump is not the one that you were describing at all. In fact, since I've worked at EDB, which is the whole of my professional PostgreSQL career, I I've never had that situation happen. Like not once have I run into a situation where a customer should have been using something other than PG dump and they were just using PG dump and then they got into trouble. What happens to me rather frequently is that someone has used some other kind of backup and things have gone really badly wrong for some reason and PG dump becomes the way that we can help that customer to get out from under that problem. So just as your experience with the customers that you've worked with is informing the way that you view the issue, I have a different set of experiences, a very different set of experiences from what it sounds like. And so this thing that to you feels like, ah, oh, this is the catastrophe, we've got to steer clear of this. In my experience, that's never the problem. It's always the thing we reach for to get out from under the problem. And I, I really just want to highlight that because I'm not saying your experience isn't valid, and I hope you'll, you know, return the, the same courtesy. I actually understand the partially what Nicola is trying to say here, because I was before EDB, before working with Robert, I was working for Second Quadrant and we were building our own backup solution, Barman. Mm -hmm. And now it's EDB owns it. And that I know because I was actually doing remote EBA work and there was a lot of customers with backup issues, you know, they had their own home cook scripts. In the wrong hands, this can go wrong because there are some things that PG dump and restore, you have to know about it. Like how do you do the dump process? How do you do restore? Do you actually test these things? Do you copy this, you know, the whole vault directory or do you like kind of consider it's just some logs that we can actually delete at some point and so on. So if people don't know how to maybe put these things together in a way, it is like not really helpful for some people, then things can go wrong. And I think that things actually went wrong. That's why we were steering people, you know, if you just do regular, you know, backups and restores, use this tool that we have or any other tool that can be for, you know, cooked for backups and you can keep the retention period. You can keep your backups for X days. You can restore them and test and you can have continuous backups that edit, edit so it's not like partial, you know, it can be just like a continuous thing that you don't need to worry and you can do point in time recovery and so on and so on. So I understand this rhetoric and I was the advocacy of it. But then I also feel like it went too far saying, you know, this is not, this is not usable and that I, I oppose basically. Yeah, it's like pendulum, I agree. Yeah, but, exactly. But uh, the start of this pendulum is this, these 20 years of documentation. So you, you raised a very, very good point about restore. When I, when I hear backup, full-fledged backup, it's not only physical to me, it's also uh, verified. And if... If we have physical backup, which we test, that's great. While with dumps, I'm very curious. While Robert, you didn't have, you didn't see inability of pitch dump to read some, I don't like some database which is corrupted and we cannot get dump out of it. But uh, second question, like here, well, second that, uh, okay, that, that that actually happens all the time. And one of the things that I often end up helping people do is 
fixing the database enough that we can use PG Dump to get the data out of it. Because right. if, if, the da- if the database has incurred a lot of damage at a physical level for some reason, we're never going to be able to repair that well enough to uh, give confidence that everything is the way that it should be. So a dump and restore, in my professional opinion, is absolutely essential in that situation to get back to a clean state. Now, you are 100% correct that the dump may also fail or the restore may also fail, but those are problems that we can understand and fix, right? We can look and say, ah, well, you have a PG class entry, but you're missing a PG index entry, so we need to create the one or delete the other, right? That's a problem where we can say, aha, that's something that we as Postgres experts can can look into and understand what needs to be done to bring this back to a state where PG dump is going to run. But the blocks being messed up at a physical level or out of sync with each other because we've had some time travel of some kind or something like that, those are problems we, we won't be able to get out from under that ever. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes total sense. And uh, m- m- moreover, we like it's very popular approach to use PG dump to, to test physical backups to see that we can read all, all uh, heap day like all except indexes right for indexes we use pgm check but to test physical backups we use pg dump to def null for example right just to see okay. that there is no corruption like we, we can read it at, for sure and and uh, sec- like you you mentioned restore i remember a couple of times i i saw a dump could not be restored because of uh, unique key violation, right? Because of corruption of uh, uniqueness constraint. Because some duplicates happened and unique key didn't save us uh, due to some bugs or something. Uh, maybe some somebody disabled something, I don't know. Like, Or foreign keys, foreign keys as well. If you disable triggers, you can corrupt your data easily, right? You disable triggers, you, you load something and you enable triggers and Postgres won't check it. And during PG dump, PG dump you can have, but you can rest- you cannot restore from it, right? So yeah, we we see some mutual points definitely here, and and uh, the question is just about language, I guess. That's it. Well, I think yeah. it's also about experience, Nicola. I, I, you mentioned some disasters. It, is it, my right in understanding this is folks who have come to you with some issue, and they've only. It's not just that they're using. PG dump as a backup tool, it's their only form of backup. And what kind of issues is that causing? Remember the first managed service, uh, managed Postgres service created, popular at least. It, it was called Heroku. I think it still exists, mm-hmm. but not being actively developed these days. And they offered backups as dumps. You can download them. That's great, actually. That uh, if a managed service, Postgres service provider allows you to download backups, that's great. But it was just backups. And nobody does this. I mean, nobody among very popular managed Postgres providers do this. They they rely on physical backups these days, right? And also on snapshots and so on. I mean, cloud snapshots, full disk snapshots. And this also shows the evolution, right, of backup concept in many people's mind, minds, right? Not only us. So... I think it's, it would be great just to agree on uh, the language and uh, discuss, like, I, I'm okay to be alone thinking that backup is just physical backup. Backup c- could include both logical and physical, and we could clarify documentation and uh, language articles and so on, right? And I see it's a pendulum, right? Again, like, this is my point. Uh, too long documentation was claiming th- this is a backup tool. It was, this language was super harsh. And uh, I... I I remember I was trying to explain at least a couple of times in my life, I was trying to explain some customers with growing Postgres databases, uh, like exceeding terabyte and approaching 10 terabytes. I'm saying, don't rely on, on PG Dumpo as, as backup solution. And they just showed me documentation saying, this is like, this is what they say. I, like, Vendor is saying this, right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think that, that, that there is a maybe a, a difference between something that creates a backup and a backup tool. I mean, this does get down a little bit to what you think words mean. So it almost seems like a silly thing to argue about, right? But I think 
you know, you asked Goldstein at the beginning, like, if I take a snapshot of all of my data on a, a, a cell phone, is that a backup? And I think the answer is obviously yes, but equally obviously, that's a silly way to do a backup because <laughs> your restore procedure is going to be very unpleasant, which is not <laughs> what you want, right? So right. I think sometimes when people talk about a backup or a tool that can take a backup or a backup tool, sometimes they mean like, can I get a copy of my data from which I could recover, right? And that's one question. And PG Dump will give you that, right? The, the other question, sometimes what people mean is, they mean, is this like and they may have some particular commercial product in mind that offers a certain feature set. And their question is, am I going to get this feature set where, for example, my retention times will be managed and my my actual process of orchestrating the backup and orchestrating the recovery will be managed? And, and then the answer is no, PG Dump is not going to do that for you. And you probably do want those things in most cases. So. I don't know. Like, I think there's there's a lot of nuance that's that's possible in the language here. But for me, the important thing is to make sure that we're clearly able to explain what the benefits and drawbacks of the different approaches are, rather than you know spending too much time f fighting about the the specific language, which for me it gets a little bit silly. I agree. Yeah. yeah. I agree as well, Robert. In your blog post, uh, you make a really good case for. Uh, the tone of the statement being difficult and i think you actually use some language that is that like waters it, it down a little bit or explains a little bit more it doesn't take many more extra words to do so but i also wanted to ask do you see this problem in other statements in the postgres community like are there other things people are saying that, that remind you of the tone of this kind of statement as well I don't have specific examples in mind off the top of my head but definitely yes i mean it's a chronic problem on hackers you know, I think I wrote a blog post about the sort of tone of dialogue in the, in the Postgres community towards the end of last year. And it's always a problem because when you post your patch on PostgreSQL hackers, you're essentially soliciting review. And people are rarely going to write you a review where they're like, you know what? This patch is amazing and I love it. I mean, it happens. People actually do get those kinds of reviews and it's a great day when you do, but generally when you reviewing a patch, you're picking something that you actually like and would like to see go forward. And then you're saying the worst things about it that you can think of to say. You're like, so here's all the problems. Here's all of the stuff that I think needs to be better in or order for this to become part of the product, which I hope it will, but, but these things are the things that I think need to be fixed first. And so what I see is that actually for a, a lot of committers in particular, people's mental health is not in a great place. You know, I kind of thought my mental health was not in a great place around some of this stuff. And then I talked to some other people and found that they were feeling worse about it than, than I was feeling by like significant margins. And it's, in my opinion, it's rarely because of bad intent. I mean, obviously, people get frustrated. People say things that they shouldn't have said or they don't say it in the right way or they're they're pissed off. I mean, those... Those things happen, and I don't want to pretend like they don't. But I think very, very often it's a case of the nature of the workflow and the nature of the process and the kind of engineering that we're doing. It's difficult and it's error prone, and even the absolute smartest people in the community make all kinds of mistakes, you know, over and over again, right? Like we were doing a rewrap of a scheduled minor release that happened last week. We're doing that this week because somebody committed a fix for a bug and the fix contained another bug. And it doesn't matter who made the mistake or who didn't catch the mistake. That's not relevant. It, it happens all the time. And I think it's really challenging to people because we work in a very open environment where everybody sees every email we write, every patch we commit, every patch we thought about committing. You know, it's 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 out there constantly. And and, and you just realize that there are so many ways for you to screw up. And every time you make a mistake, everybody sees it. So 
I think it's a it's a struggle for everybody. As far as I can tell, every single person who works on hackers encounters this problem of getting the tone right all the time. And I am certainly not going to sit here and pretend like I get it right more often than average. I think a lot of people would say I, I am below average in that way, but I'm, I can tell you I'm very aware of the problem and I am trying to figure out like how to do it better because, you know, at the end of the day, it's not enough for us to deliver great software we need to deliver great software while also creating a community that people want to participate in. And that applies for me, first of all, to the developer community, because that's where I spend most of my time. But it also, uh, I think, applies more, much more broadly to the user community. And I think that is part of the reason this issue set me off a little bit, because, you know, it's the sort of thing that I'm struggling often in vain to do right on a, on, on a daily basis. But instead of being targeted at other developers who at least kind of know that the negative feedback is coming, some of this felt to me like it was targeted toward toward users who like they don't realize that they're about to get jumped on for, you know, wading into a flame war about whether something is or isn't something, you know, and I just don't want I don't want users to I don't want anybody to have that experience. I certainly don't want users to have that experience. I personally think that only only from having you articulate that, I've thought of one that I, that annoys me a little bit, and that's the correction of people pronouncing or spelling Postgres wrongly or missing missing the S off. Sometimes happens if people are new to the community, yeah. Yeah. and immediately they get jumped on. I think, oh come on, they they're clearly new. So yeah, I I can definitely yeah. see that. It, it also happens a lot with people based on on their language of origin. You know, like mm. the, the fact that the fact that we pronounce it PostgreSQL, I believe that's at least one of the canonical pronunciations, yeah. you know, that is much more natural for somebody who learned to speak English in the United States than it is for somebody who learned to speak English in, for example, India, right? Like it is English, but the way that English is spoken in India, it's a distinct dialect. It has its own you know, ways that people say things, ways that people communicate characteristic patterns of speech. And uh, that's not the only place, certainly. I think, actually, there are probably other countries that where the problem is even more acute because English isn't even used as a common language communication in many parts of the world. But even when it is, it's not necessarily the same as your English, and people aren't necessarily going to be, you know, starting from the same point. Right. Uh, if I read a word that is unfamiliar and my wife reads the same word, we're likely to pronounce it the same way in most cases. But if a colleague from halfway around the world reads the same word, their instinct may not be the same as mine. And that's not necessarily a question of me being right and then being wrong. That's a question of we went to different schools. We were taught different things. Yeah, I think it also points out to the wider problem in many communities, like the longevity of the projects will depend on people. And if you are hostile to people or like, uh, because we all come from different parts of the world, I didn't learn English until I was old, like, you know, an older kid. And that is always a problem when I give a talk or when I write an email. It is still in the back of my mind that I try to correct myself. I use multiple tools. I try to present myself as good as I can. But there are limits. I still confuse the propositions I use in and at on all, all around randomly. I, can, I could never fix this. And that doesn't mean that I can't contribute to the project. And I could and I do. And that's what I believe, like these little uh, statements, maybe we took it to a philosophical approach through, it's not mm -hmm. about PG dump backup or not, but like as you know, saying Postgres, but we should do better in how we handle communication because this is the way that people interact with you. They report issues and if you don't accept the problems well, people will not report it or they will not actually use this and report back what they use so that you don't actually get the feedback from people and because you cut these channels that people actually try to communicate to you instead of opening all these channels that we should actually amplify we should have more channels for people to bring stuff that they they interact with postgres or ecosystem in general so that's where i was really impressed by um, robert's blog about how open he was about this. And I, I appreciate the efforts that going on towards this because when I started, I also felt 
scared honestly reading like e some of the emails i was like i wouldn't want this reaction to come to me for example so it shouldn't be like that and, and i think it's not just an issue of dialect either you know like that is definitely part of it but one thing that i've noticed on hackers is that clarity and extreme precision of expression is very very highly valued right like someone can come along with a worse idea and because they explain it extremely clearly and precisely either it gets accepted or they get feedback on how it should be changed or positive comments welcome to the community hey great to have you right somebody else writes a worse email about a better idea and it actually gets a worse response and I do understand some of why that happens, right? We value people whose style of expression is similar to our own, where we feel like we can freely and easily communicate with those people. And everybody's busy. So you don't want to spend a huge amount of time trying to understand email A if you could very quickly and easily understand email B. But it's obviously super off-putting to people when you may have proposed something that was actually great and if somebody had given you five minutes of their time, they could have understood exactly what you were trying to say, but they just flipped through the email really fast and then, and then they moved on because they're busy. And that's, that's obviously going to be demoralizing to people. To play devil's advocate a little bit, I personally err on the side of being polite and trying to be kind and trying to be welcoming. But I also think sometimes that approach doesn't always land people don't always take the lesson from it or learn from the statement or realize that what, maybe what i'm really trying to say or i'm not being clear enough that kind of thing and i do think for example with the the comment that we started with i feel like there's a, a certain amount of trying to save people from themselves or trying to shock people deliberately trying to be provocative in order to make people think oh we shouldn't only be relying on this tool for this purpose or you know we maybe I should be rethinking my thoughts or, you know, that um, it doesn't apply to all of these cases, like mispronouncing the project name, but I've seen this specific comment come mostly from consultants, some experienced consultants, some who are very kind and also involved in like diversity initiatives. I've definitely seen this from people that you wouldn't necessarily expect to be uh, direct and unkind. So the exact phrase PG dump is not a backup tool. So I, I think that's coming from a place of having seen people shoot themselves in the foot and wanting to save people from that and wanting to be quite direct to avoid it. So I, I don't know for sure, but I believe their intent is good, uh, yeah. but maybe they're deliberately choosing to be provocative or, or direct or I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm, maybe I'm putting words in their mouth, basically. Uh, I think it's like we are not calling out people for just saying, you know, this is not a backup tool mm -hmm. because we understand where they come from because we are in the same industry working for ages. We know these people, we all had the customer stories and so on. But I think the general idea from here that when somebody shares a blog post, let's say we all wrote about it, right? I had wrote two blog posts and Robert wrote two more. And we, we just, you know, got together and talking about, it, let's say he's pointing at like why PG Dump is good at dependency management, let's say, you know, it's like we take it for granted, which I wanted to bring up in the today's call to just actually showcase that there are things we should appreciate in this tool, why he says it is an amazing tool. Uh, then towards this, somebody writes like, but it is not a backup tool. That I don't get it because it's not what is the discussion about. Like we are trying to discuss that there are ways you can make this tool in your tool set. It's not the only tool. There are professional solutions for backup, backing up your database against disaster recovery, as we mentioned, the retention and the you know, whole orchestration of the database backups and recovery. But when we are discussing this tool specifically, which I feel that is important here because there is nuance to discuss, to be discussed, and just shutting down the discussion saying, but it's not a backup tool, that's where I feel that this needs to be improved better because then you don't really contribute to this because you need to say then why it's not in this case, why don't you agree with this, let's say, is a dependency management thing is not for you or like why it could be improved. You could say that PG dump could be improved because let's say we could run vacuum after it or we can do, I don't know, like do statistics better or something. I mean, you just to contribute where a PG dump might have been improved because I've seen people like, you know, in the 
discussions that they struggle with like mapping let's say pg dump options to pg restore options because they assume the order will be the same and they don't get it and so on so there are things maybe we could get input from why people complain about these things and to improve that's where i i go for issues you know i see this comments in the forums and like oh okay this is a good idea maybe i can actually talk uh, about this but then when we are discussing this and coming with like okay there's not a backup tool it kind of brings back to the zero and doesn't really improve anything but you, you, your second article was basically clay, agreeing that it's not a backup tool. You, no, in you, the I, sense I'm that just, why people, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, but in the sense that people say, as I'm saying, as a solution, if you want to orchestrate your backups, use a, I don't know, a tool that is like, right. you know, barman, backrest or something. But then another discussion we have, why it can't be, why PG dump, why we are discussing the because in the second blog post of Robert, for example, he gives up like this, you know, why it could be a nice tool for these of the use cases that he lists. And there getting the question of, again, it's not that, that I don't agree, basically, like, okay, use a better uh, maybe solution if you are managing production databases in multiple environments that are giant databases and you really don't need to deal with, you know, home run. But histor historically, it is still a tool that we use, you know, it could be used for different cases. What, what I hear is you're saying when people come to you to comment to your first blog post saying, I think it was Frank Pashot and I jo I'm joining him, still joining, and he said PG, PG Dump is not a backup tool, you, you think it's like shut down, shuts down some discussion and so on, but I just explained that this is a pain from a lot of experience and we are just reacting and what I hear you still try to judge him, right? Let's just no, no, um, it's that's definitely not for it. I'm just saying we discussed that. But the second blog post was about, you know, there is yeah. backup tools. You should use it. But then right. when Robert was describing a part of why PG dump is good, in my opinion, it was like very valuable points. Right. And there, it was not even relevant. We were not even discussing. You I, should should you I use mean, you know this tool or not? And I'm not targeting yeah. anybody. I'm not targeting yeah. anybody. So be yeah. clear about it. Yeah. So. It, it, uh, the change happened only now. It, it's in Postgres 18. And recently I had discussion, this like uh, claiming, oh, it's not backup tool. Somebody says, oh, what is this about then? And sending me a link to PG dump uh, documentation. So I think I would not judge people who are saying PG dump is not a backup tool until we have this change in documentation and start recovering from this stress we had 20 years. This is my point. And I stay on this point very strong. I mean, I like, and and common ground is let's let's start distinguishing physical and logical backups. We can clarify this on documentation as Oracle and MySQL did. And uh, I, there is a, already part of documentation speaking of backups. It, it describes dumps. Uh, I mean, pitch dump and then file system snapshots and then uh, point in time recovery uh, full fledged backups. And just if, if we clarify documentation and I, I will stop seeing customers sending me this link saying you are wrong, this is documentation saying you are wrong. I mean, well, but uh, like, I, I think, you know, I don't know, like if you can't win an argument against a documentation link, I, I don't know, <laughs> it feels like something's not right there, you know, like I'm, yeah. not, trying, I'm well, not trying to be harsh, and I, I, but I just feel like, you know, <laughs> If you, if somebody hires you to give them good advice, and you give them advice that is actually good, and their response Robert, is Robert, let me interrupt you. Sorry, I I'm just like like I feel judgment in you and Gulchin's words. Like you tell me now how you want to be welcoming, and now you judge me like I cannot win. I cannot win two things. Pitch dump as a backup tool. Sometimes I cannot. They say they trust documentation more because many more minds behind it. And also PG star statement, uh, documentation says you cannot say, set it to positive value, keep it zero globally, because globally it's a bad idea. I, st I already, like, some customers I win, some customers I don't. I'm not a genius, right? But I feel in both of you, I feel judgment. Why don't we stop judging people and sentiment and so on? I bring you, like, improvement. Let's say there are two types of backups, logical and physical, and then we... We develop language from there, and this joins us, right? When you judge people saying they came to me with this statement, or you say you cannot win, 
your customer or the this splits us. And I start fighting with you. I don't want to fight with you. But I mean, that that's also my complaint about the language that you were using. So I like I don't I don't know how to have this discussion without having opinions about whether certain language is good or bad. And, and I don't think I mean, you, you can't right? like, we, we have to be able to talk about what the language does, and t to what extent it helps or hurts. And yeah, of course, there's some judgment there. I don't know. Like, I definitely have been in the situation of having a customer who wouldn't listen. And I, the frustration that you feel with that situation feels very genuine to me. Like, I, I can totally imagine that happening and, and being a bad experience. But I, I don't know. I, I'm not even saying it's a bad thing that we changed the language and the documentation. I, I was only reacting against the sort of like conclusory statement, PG Dump is a backup tool, and now I don't want to talk about it anymore. I, I think we should always be talking about it more. I think we should be trying to, as you say, bring clarity to it and bring precision to it. Uh, I agree with you totally. Like I, 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 I hear you now well, and I think we will stop saying this actually. If documentation will be, it's already fixed. I think it can be fixed even better if we, if we say it's a, it's a logical backup tool, for example. Everyone will be happy, I think, right? And uh, we will stop saying it's not a, a backup tool. Uh, we will start saying it's not a physical backup tool, which is obvious, right? And uh, this will join everything and so on, like right? I, I agree with. Your reaction, actually, which says this statement, it's not a backup tool, it's like too like far from balance, right? It's off balance. I agree with this. So it's not a good statement, actually, I, I admit. But again, it's a reaction to another not a good statement which we had in, in documentation, which didn't say logical backup, it said just, just backup. Okay. We're pretty much out of time. Okay. Th I wanted to thank you all for your thoughts on this. I think it is a difficult subject, and I think actually it's really nice to have three people that all care about educating folks and s teaching people how to do things well with different opinions on how to do so or, you know, slightly different approaches on how to do so. But th as Nikolai says, as Gulchin pointed out in her blog post, the language around this has been changed in the documentation. Robert, keep fighting the good fight on the on the hacker, the tone on things on hackers. Um is there any any last words anybody else wants to add? Let's start. Gulchen, did you want to say anything else at the end? No, I'm happy that we are discussing it and I don't take things personally. I mean, we are here just to discuss technically why this could be useful in some cases and why not. And yeah, that was anyway the summary of what I said in the blog post as well. So if people like to read it and comment on it and I'm happy to discuss more. Thanks. Wonderful. Well, we're looking forward to your future blog posts, whether you want to write them or not. Uh, Robert, any last words from you? I just think, uh, you know, uh, on Nikolai's comment about making the documentation better, what I would encourage, uh, and of course this is much longer than we can actually do in this forum, is, you know, let's let's get down beyond the headline, right? Like the, say, saying in the headline that it is a backup tool or that it's not a backup tool or it's an export, it's a dump, it's a lot. We, we got to get beyond that that subject line and think about what we what we say down deeper. And I think one of the areas where the Postgres documentation is sometimes weak is, is it doesn't always do a good job listing pros and cons. Pros and cons very often don't get listed for things. So, you know, that that's probably uh, an area where we could, uh, we could grow as a community. Big time. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much, everybody. And thanks, Nicola. Catch you next week. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thanks. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye. Ciao.